You're looking in the mirror and you're not super happy with what you see. You're scrolling and scrolling and watching, maybe procrastinating, maybe looking for some inspiration, and you stumble across the one or the two. You get super motivated, you can do it, you're starting tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. You make a green smoothie, you get in a great workout, you're feeling great, you're gonna make it. This time, you can do it. A few days go by, you're feeling good, you're on top of it, you've been consistent, but then a week or so goes by and you don't see any changes. Then the following week you start skipping workouts, now it's every other day, now it's once a week. And soon enough, you quit. You throw in the towel, you don't care anymore, you're done, you're eating ice cream and watching TV. You've given up. A few weeks go by, you regain motivation, and the cycle continues. You start right back at where you were in the beginning. I've been there, you've been there, if you're watching this, but I have made it out of that. And I want to get you out of that too. You need to give yourself some grace and you do need to understand that it's not completely your fault. Yes, you need to have discipline. This is not a complete excuse, but you do need to know about the emotional cycle of change. It's basically a psychology term about the stages of emotion and how you react in times of big change or big transition. Remember, change is scary. Our brains are literally wired to choose comfort, choose familiarity. We don't always want to put ourselves in scenarios of change. We don't always seek out change, but when you're going on any sort of fitness journey, that's what you're doing. You're seeking out change, right? Right? You're trying to make a change, change your life, get in shape, whether that's losing weight, gaining weight, building muscle, overcoming some sort of disorder, whatever it is, it's change. The emotional cycle of change starts right with exactly what I was describing at the beginning. And if you could relate to that, you've been there. The first part is called uninformed optimism. You're excited, you're motivated, you want to start. You're on this high. Here though, it is very important that you define your why. Why do you want this? What do you want to change? How do you want to feel? Why are you dissatisfied with your current state? Where do you want to go? How are you going to get there? And why? Do you want to be more confident? Do you want to look a certain way? Do you want to have energy? Do you want to be able to keep up with others around you? You can have multiple whys, but you need to keep this in mind and constantly refer back to it. Then stage two is called informed pessimism. This is when things start to get harder. You know, you've been consistent for a little while, but you're not exactly seeing results. You're losing that motivation. You're starting you're starting to skip your workouts, you're starting to not follow what you intended for how you want to eat. Things are challenging and you're kind of on the decline. Then you get to rock bottom, which is called Valley of Despair. This is when your goals just seem so, so far away, they're impossible. This is at the point where you give up, unless you're able to overcome this. <laughs> but this is where a lot of people often fall off because they're not seeing results, they think it's impossible, they're ready to give up, and they drop off here and they circle back at the top in a few weeks, a few months, a year. I feel huge. It's just so like annoying because it's like, I felt like I was making such good progress. But remember earlier, your why. That's when your why is most important. When you hit rock bottom, you need to remember why am I doing this? How do I want to feel? What are my goals? What are my reasons for being on this journey in the first place? And if you're able to pass rock bottom and start going back up, you're already a step ahead. You're a step ahead of where you ever were before if you've been through this cycle many times. And that's the thing, right? Your only competition is you. So if you are someone that has been on this cycle, many times, if you can come out of the valley of despair, you are beating your past self and you're proving that you can actually do it. You're proving to that other version of yourself, no, that wasn't me, we're doing it this time, and I mean it. That stage four is called informed optimism. You're able to push through it. Maybe this is the time you actually do start seeing results, so then your why and your motivation, they're coming back, they're working together, you're, you're doing it. It gives you that extra push that you just might need. But you've earned it, you deserve it. And now things are probably sticking. This new lifestyle, the things that you're doing, how you've gotten all the way through it, you're building habits, you're creating a foundation for yourself, your goals are really seeming attainable, and then you get there. The last stage is called success and fulfillment. This is the last stage and the final stage where you reach your goals, but remember, a fitness journey, no matter what it is, is a lifelong journey, right? Maybe you achieve one goal, but then your goals kind of evolve. Maybe you wanna lose 10 pounds. Okay, once you do that, well, you're not just gonna quit, right? Because if you revert back to your old self, you're just gonna gain the weight back. But say you lose the 10 pounds and you're like, okay, now I wanna try getting into a different exercise. Now I wanna try to build more muscle. Whatever it is, your goals just change and evolve with you. However, if you get here, you have done it. You've changed your life. You've created a new sustainable lifestyle, which is key. You fought through good and bad. You were consistent and you're forever changed. This little you is something so many of us struggle with. And that's why I'm telling you to give yourself some grace because this is a real thing. This is how our brains react to change. This is just how we learned, you know? Resisting change is kind of a part of a survival. You also gotta remember 
on average, it takes over two months before a new behavior becomes automatic. And when you're on a journey like this, chances are you're incorporating a lot of new behaviors. It's typically about 66 days, but can range anywhere from 18 to 254 days to form a new habit. Thank you, Atomic Habits, the book. If you haven't read it, you gotta read it. But I think being aware of this and knowing about this phenomenon can help you. You know, you understand why you're feeling the way you are and why you've tried this so many times and you've dropped off so many times and you know that when it gets hardest is the most important point for you to push through. And you have to remember your why. Your motivation's not always gonna be there, but that's why discipline is the most important thing. And I talk about discipline all the time. Of course, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna make mistakes, whatever. But having discipline the majority of the time is what's gonna get you so far. It's gonna make you stay consistent and it's gonna get you down but up out of that valley of despair and able to reach your goals. Our brains literally release stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, and they encourage us to flee from circumstances that give us anxiety. So change, new things, transition. It's literally a mechanism for survival. Something else you might struggle with is the fear of success or the fear of being seen. I've seen this talked about a lot recently. It's not a new phenomenon, but I've just seen it a lot recently and it's a very real thing. It's basically the fear of succeeding, so much so that you might end up self-sabotaging. And this might not be obvious at all. You might have no idea that you're doing it. It might be kind of in the back of your head. You're afraid of success because with success brings change. Hence what we just talked about. Of course, success can be a good thing, right? It's a positive word, but it also can be scary. You also might think that you don't deserve success, right? The whole imposter syndrome thing. Even if you've earned something, you don't feel like you deserve it. You don't feel like you're good enough. Like why, why me? Why would I possibly get there or earn this or achieve this? But I do believe the more you work at something, the more you show up on a daily basis, the more things you do in support of this success or this journey, whatever you're on, you can slowly prove to yourself that you are deserving. I mean, if someone else can have it, why can't you? Of course, some people have things easier. Sometimes it's harder for certain people to get things given situations and variables and all of that, but that's not what I'm saying. All of those aside, if someone can have something, why can't you? You know, there's no reason that you're really not deserving because you are. And when you put in that work, it just becomes so much more real. Fear of success might look like you setting too low of goals for yourself. It might be you procrastinating. You're just letting an opportunity come and pass. I've done that. You might be a perfectionist. Some people see this as a good thing. They just want the highest quality work, but sometimes if you're too much of a perfectionist and you don't just finish the project that you're working on, you're never gonna let it go anywhere. That can really get in the way. That can be a bad thing. Or maybe when you're almost to that success, you end up quitting. Or other abusive behaviors can be a form of fear of success. You might also be afraid of failing and maybe that's why you only just but so start that fitness journey, but you don't take it far because in the back of your head you never really believe in yourself and you don't want to admit that you gave it a real go if you just fail you know it's like not giving your all to kind of protect yourself from feeling failure that's not an excuse it's so easy to do that but protecting yourself really doesn't get you anywhere in that sense any sort of journey is such a mental thing. I would argue way more mental than physical. The hard part isn't lifting the weight. The hard part is getting out of your head, making a plan for yourself and believing in yourself that you can actually get somewhere. Not being afraid of failing, but also not being afraid of the change that comes with success. But I wanna share these things because I think it's just so important to be aware. Like I mentioned, not only to give yourself some grace, but just to know like, okay, I'm feeling this way, but it kinda makes sense. It's coming from somewhere. It's not because I'm terrible. It's not because I'm a failure. There's a real reason and I can get out of it. It's possible. Aside from being aware of these things and constantly reminding yourself and being surrounded by your why, who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? Where do you want to be? What does it look like? What are the daily things you have to do to become the person you want to be and feel the way you want to feel? All of those together really can take you far. But remember, you can't just walk into a journey completely blind. You have to be open-minded. I always talk about trial and error because you're never gonna know what you like unless you try things. So to successfully walk into this, right, you're starting to get motivated, you wanna start on this new journey, you've had it with falling off, you wanna restart for good this time, do some research. Walk into this with a plan. And when I say plan, I don't mean a super crazy detailed like I'm eating this, this, and this every single day and I'm working out this five days a week, no. I'm saying start off slow. Have an idea of, I wanna incorporate more of this in my diet. I wanna work out three times a week. When I sustain that, 
four times a week. I want to do this type of workout. I want you to do the research because the more of a plan, whether it's kind of guidelines or maybe you do have experience and maybe you can do a detailed plan. When you have a plan or maybe even standards, I would call this, it's harder to crumble. You know, when you're just kind of walking into this saying like, I'm going to start, I'm going to work out and eat healthy because that's so general. It's so easy to fall off because you're not, you're not missing anything. But if you say like, Hey, I'm working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, when Wednesday comes, you know it's workout day, you're less likely to skip it because you have planned to work out on Wednesdays. You know, kind of setting in guidelines for yourself to uphold, it's harder to fall off then. I could go into so many more tips to help you stay on track, but just remember, this is such a mental journey and so many people fall off because of how hard it really is mentally. But you don't have to be that person. And me, for example, I went into this wanting to lose weight I did that and now my goals are evolving. I've maintained it for the most part, but I'm trying to build muscle. You know, maybe I have gained a little bit of weight back. Maybe I look different from this point in my life to this point, right? That's fine. But from that initial journey, my entire lifestyle is completely different. And that's how I know I am successful. And I still have new goals and new places I wanna get with this whole world of, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. And that's why I consider myself successful. That's why I think I've reached success and fulfillment. On the broad scale, of course, I'm on my own journey right now, like I mentioned, you're going through that again, but this journey is never ending. I hope that made sense. I hope this was relatable for you and you can take it and learn from it, give yourself grace, but continue the good fight. Your brain might be working a little bit against you and that's okay, but you can do it. And I wanna give you that motivation, cause you can, and I'm always rooting for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you in my next one.